Good morning, everyone. Welcome to second, now uh, second, Tel Aviv ETAP, Experts in Technology and Policy Gathering. We're very proud to be here, and my sincere thanks to Ido for helping us to organize, and to Denny and many others. It has been really very exciting for us to be here a year ago, almost a year ago by now, and create this communities that actually was interested in continuing the dialogue and conversation and try to create something meaningful. So what is this event about? Let's talk about it, because I think it's important to frame what our discussion will be about today. Why we call it as gathering of experts in technology and policy? It's very simple. If you think about today's internet, especially the aspects of privacy and security and safety and many, many other adjectives of internet, you will always find that there is a gap that exists between policy and technologies. Because quite often we find ourselves in a situation where policies are developed by people focused on the legal aspects of things, uh, ethical aspects of things, and technologies are developed by engineers who often don't have enough understanding of what the other side is thinking about, and vice versa. So what we're trying to accomplish here is crossing several dimensions. On one side, we're trying to close the gap between technologists and policymakers. So we can actually have a paradigm shift from consequential development of either policies or technologies to environment where there is a synergistic development of policies and technologies so they can help each other. They can help educate each other in the process of development so we can actually optimize the outcome and resulting policy or resulting technology. So that's one aspect of it. That's one dimension. But if you look in the other dimension, and there is a reason why we put a tagline of biometrics and access control, because we also would like to bring the dimension of taking policy development around the globe and try to extract and find commonalities, and also realize what the differences are, because we have to be cognizant of the fact that depending on where we are in the place of the world, the policy, the cultural aspect, ethical aspects may differ from place to place, and they actually do quite a bit. Recently, I even learned that I live in the United States. Apparently, the state where I live, New Jersey, has a very unique law related to information exposure on CARS ODB connector. It's unique to New Jersey. Nothing like that exists anywhere else in the United States. Go figure. So that's a very good example in my mind how policy is sometimes regionalized, and sometimes it's even down to even smaller fractions. But as technologies, we develop technologies that span typically the globe. We want to enable economies of scale. We want to do things that allow us to embrace the power of the internet, which doesn't really know what the borders are, right? Bits and bytes have the ability to flow anywhere where electrons can flow. And electrons can be transmitted through the wire. We can have wireless transmission. So we really have a technology that spans around the globe. So we need to figure out how to leverage commonalities and policies so we can leverage it to in creation of economy of scales for technologies. So that's what gave motivation to the internet initiative. Essentially, this understanding that we have a gap between policy and technology development, the gap that we need to close, we understood that we also have regionalized issues that we need to understand and embrace and figure out how to deal with to the best of our ability. And given the fact that IEEE has a tremendous platform, tremendous expertise in convening and helping people to drive towards consensus, we felt that there is a tremendous opportunity for IEEE to step into the place of internet technology policy and provide this platform for bringing together policy developers and technology makers. So that's why we're here. And as I said before, we were here last year. We have gone around the world. We've been to Beijing. We've been to a couple of places in India. We've been to a couple of places in the United States, a couple of places in South America. We're going around the world. Why? Because the conversation about policy and technology interaction is always local, because there are local aspects, as we just discussed. But we're trying to bring 
those local discussions, local conversations to the global worldwide stage and creates a community that actually is borderless, community that embraces multitude of stakeholders that can work together and help us to transition from the world which we knew yesterday, where policies and technologies not always understand each other, to the world where we have a synergistic development, development that actually feeds into each other and helps us to harness the power of the internet, what internet can bring to us. So that's kind of my very, very short introduction for what we talk about. What I would like to suggest for the day today is to look at it as not a single event. This is more of an opportunity for us to spark a conversation, to give momentum to the community development, to build a set of actionable items that at the end of the day today, we can actually write down on a piece of paper or computer screen and agree to work on so we can actually further the goals that we set in front of ourselves. And we have tools and means to accomplish that. We have online community support. We have people eager to get engaged into this conversation, not only in this audience, but also worldwide. As you know, we're being broadcasted on the internet. So you will be able to see us online and be part of this conversation as a result. So don't think of today as, yes, we got together in this room, we talked, then we left, and this is it. No, this is just the beginning. This is just a spark to ignite the discussion, ignite the conversation, to move us to the next step. And I hope that throughout the day today, what we'll have an opportunity to do is to listen to a few very, very interesting keynotes. And I tell you, if the discussions we had in preparations for this meeting are any indication, You'll be fascinated by some of the keynotes and some of the debates that we'll have on this floor among the people. And it's brilliant. It's, it's fantastic. But more importantly, those discussions and debates and presentations are meant to give you some ideas for breakout sessions in the afternoon. So we can actually sit around the table and say, OK, out of what we had discussed, those are important takes away from today. It doesn't mean that the issues that we will focus on today are the most important in the world. Not at all. What it means, those are issues that we collectively are willing to address and willing to continue the conversation on. That's what it means. And there will be a multitude of those issues because we have them coming from other events that we have globally around the world. And hopefully we will culminate at Internet Governance Forum in uh, Mexico in December of this year, where we can actually bring some of the takeaways from all of the discussions we had around the world and present them to the internet technology policy community as some things that we have learned, some things that we had embraced, and some things that we're working on. So we can really contribute into the active development and shaping of how internet technology policy will go forward. So that's our goal, quite ambitious. But given the fact that we have been doing that for the last two years and discussions are continuing, I'm very hopeful and very optimistic to say that we are on the right path. And the fact that you are here in this room tells me that there is an interest in what we're doing and quite a substantial one. So the day will be structured, as I said before, with a few keynotes, a panel discussion. And after that, we're going to go through what we call a rapid fire session. What is a rapid fire? Rapid fire is when we look at the issues that some of you submitted when you were going through the registration process. Maybe we'll look at them on the screen and say, oh, maybe something is missing. And then we'll try to do breakout sessions. We we'll already have two of them, at least two of them identified. One is biometrics and access control. And the other one is machine readable privacy agreements. And Jonathan here will be happy to lead that discussion. And I will be looking for all of you to kind of jump in and volunteer which discussion you would like to lead. So that's going to be quite an exciting day. And towards the end of the day, we're going to meet again and distill what we had discussed to actionable items that we all can agree on and take forward. And from there, we will start an online discussion. Hopefully, we'll meet again at some point here and maybe at some other events. Because we actually have some people who have been participating in our events several times. As an example, I would like to point to Deepak here, who works for Semantic. And Deepak had been in how many events now? At least four. And has been a very active discussion and a participant and uh, has been contributing what we're doing. Either you, you join us last year 
when we were uh, on the beach in Carlton Hotel. So did Jonathan, and we still continue this discussion. So I'm looking forward to all of you who participated last time to continue to be with us, and for those of you who just joined, to become a part of this community that has an opportunity to grow and create momentum. And Haim, you have been with us for several events, right? I can't even count, so. And part of our organizing committee and uh, one of the contributors into those discussions. So as I said, it, it's a community development. It's an opportunity for us to go forward. So with that, I would like to suggest that we do a very simple thing. We do a very quick introductions because it's very good to understand who we are, what brought us here, and what do we do in our daily lives so it explains why we're interested in what is going to happen here. Please limit your introduction to 20 seconds, not more than that. So let me start and I'll give you an example. So my name is Oleg Logvinov, and I chair the Internet Initiative. So every activity that happens in this context is under the management of our committee of people who are volunteers in IEEE and who contribute in shaping how Internet technology policy activities in IEEE are conducted. Why am I doing that? It's very simple. I used to work for ST Microelectronics. Three months ago, I started a brand new startup focused on Internet of Things, and to us, the issue of policy and technology interaction is key because if you think about Internet of Things, it's not just us clicking on the application and accepting permissions. It is machines at some point starting sharing knowledge about us with other machines. And that brings ethical dimensions, legal dimensions, technological dimensions. We need to understand how to embrace it because if we're to develop technologies powering IoT of the future, we need to embrace the concept that it's not just about exchanging bits and bytes. It's about exchanging information and knowledge that is consequential. There are ethical implications, there are legal implications, and when we write the software for the future, those implications need to be considered. So that's what motivated me to be here. So with that, I would like to offer you to continue self-introductions. <laughs>